Good evening. evening. Welcome to God's house for our worship this evening. The order of service is printed for you in the service folder that you received when you came in. I really have no announcements or anything to begin the service, so we begin with the three stanzas of our opening hymn, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions, I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, hear my prayer. Give ear to my cry for mercy. Do not bring charges against your servant because no one living can be righteous before you. Let me hear about your mercy in the morning, for I trust in you. Teach me the way that I should go, for I lift up my soul to you. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, you have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Dispel from us the works of darkness and grant us to live in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, that our faith may never be found wanting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God, our Lord, speaks to our hearts in his word. Our first reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Concerning the, day, the times and dates, brothers, there is no need to write to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When people are saying peace and security, destruction will suddenly come on them like labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will certainly not escape. But you, brothers, are not in the dark so that this day takes you by surprise like a thief. For you are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not sleep like everyone else, but rather let us remain alert and sober. To be sure, those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. You see, God did not appoint us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as you are also doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Everyone who has will be given more and he will have an abundance. Alleluia. Holy Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 25. Glory be to you, O Lord. The sermon text for the week and Jesus continues teaching. You see, the kingdom of heaven is like a man going on a journey. He called his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two talents, and to still another one talent, each according to his own ability. Then he went on his journey. The servant who had received the five talents immediately put them to work and gained five more talents. In the same way, the servant who had received the two talents gained two more. But the servant who had received one talent went away, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. The servant who received the five talents came and brought five more talents. He said, Master, you entrusted five talents to me. See? I have gained five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. The servant who received the two talents came and said, Master, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the servant who received one talent came and said, Master, I knew that you are a hard man, reaping where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter seed. Since I was afraid, I went away and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. His master answered him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter seed? Well, then you should have deposited my money with the banker so that when I came, I would get my money back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the servant who has the ten talents because everyone who has will be given more and he will have an abundance. 
But the one who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Throw that worthless servant into out the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We sing four stanzas of the hymn, The Day is Surely Drawing Near. Dear Lord, may the words that I speak and all the thoughts of our hearts and our minds be pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Do you know what time it is? Depending on your age, you may be ready to join in a course of howdy duty time, or maybe you're ready to say, Tool time. Of course, it seems as if we're slaves, aren't we? To calendar and clock. Time as precious as wealth. Hard to even find time on our packed schedules for things that are important. Yet there is an appointment written in our life planner that is put there with absolute certainty. It is written in by God himself, not by us. And that appointment is one of eternal significance because that is our appointment with our eternal destiny. So while we live and while we work and while we sleep and while even we play, our living is constantly tuned into times and days and hours spent and when to do these things. But for us as God's people, spiritually speaking, our time is oriented toward things quite different. Our clock and our calendar is always going to be oriented to that day. 
to that life, to eternity. Our days, our calendars, our time always oriented toward our life with God now and our life with God then. And so we work and we play and we sleep and we watch the passage of time from a completely different kind of perspective. There will come that day and that hour when days and hours will cease and give way to the Master's coming because he's been coming now for a long time and no one knows exactly when he's going to return but finally finally that moment came and those servants were called do you know what time it is it's time for the servants to meet their master and, and just imagine what happened in the hearts and the minds of all three of those servants when they heard that news. It's time to meet the Master. What a difference there must have been in their hearts. Those first two faithful servants, I don't think that they were thinking to themselves, will the Master be displeased that I doubled what he entrusted to me? No, rather, I think they're excited to hear the news that their master has finally come so that now they have the opportunity to return to the master what he entrusted to them and also what was gained for the master. After all, both belong to the master. All of it is his. How do you think the wicked servant felt when he heard the news. Maybe he was just trying to cut his chances. Or maybe, maybe he was excited too. Maybe he was happy to hear the master was returning so that he was going to have the opportunity to face his master and explain exactly how he thought things should be and explain why he did what he did. Because surely then, I can make the master understand my point of view. As with all of these parables, sometimes it seems as if there's a bit of a smoke screen and how we're led to certain details. And so in this one, just like in the parable last week, which happened in the verses immediately before these ones, right? We do the same thing. We praise those two faithful servants because of what they did. We scorn the wicked servant for what he did not do. And we also say, we're going to be like the faithful servants. We're not going to be like the wicked. What have we, what have we done but made the whole thing about ourselves again? This parable is about God. The two servants who were faithful knew the master the right way. Because what this parable illustrates for us is that there are two ways to know the master. Maybe think, well, pastor, there are three servants. How is there only two ways? Well, if it was just one and one, how could we ever be certain which is the true way? But now these two guys got it right. We know there is a true way to know the master and to know God. You see, what each of these servants did, these in their faithfulness and this one in their wickedness, what these servants did with what their master entrusted to them was only because of how they knew the master, who they saw the master to be. But, as the parable last week, we only get to hear the one side of it. We only get to hear how the wicked servant knows the master, what he thinks of the master. Of course, but knowing that, we also know what the two faithful servants knew of their master. Complete opposite. So, the wicked servant knew his master to be what? To be a evil and merciless and hard, heartless master. 
but that is not to know the master rightly. So the faithful servants, how did they know the master if it's opposite of how the wicked servant knew and understood the master? The faithful servants knew the master to be good and gracious, kind and generous. How could people know God and the Master so differently? The master of the wicked servant was a master that he had dreamed up in his own mind. And so thoroughly he convinced himself he was right, that this was what the master was truly right. So that he knew he could go to the master and explain it. And, and the master would be pleased with his wickedness. Surely the master must understand my point of view and my way. The servant made the master up in his head. But that wasn't the true master. Of course, the master being God... We know how so many like the wicked know for themselves only the God that they have imagined in their own hearts and minds. A God that they have created for themselves. A master that they have made for themselves. No different than the God of this wicked servant that he had made up in his own mind. What kind of gods does the human mind imagine? Well, there's Grandpa God. Too weak and old to do much harm, yet strong enough to still love me, kind of losing it upstairs. What kind of God does the human mind imagine? A God who is tolerant rather than a God who calls for repentance. God imagined by humans, a God who is accepting rather than a God who is forgiving. Or as this wicked servant, a God who is hard and evil and merciless, a God that no one would ever want to serve and certainly not to serve in any sort of joy. But now let's not fool ourselves. We might like the gods that we can make up in our minds as well. Prefer a God who will coddle us and counsel us instead of convict us of our sin to forgive us. A God that we could go to and, and say to him, certainly God, you understand that in the life that I live, to, in order to be loving and accepting, that also means I have to embrace and support these things that you have called in holy. Certainly you understand the position I am in. Certainly, God, you know what it's like to be a father after all. You made me one. You know how busy a father's life is and how much time I have to invest in my kids to do all these things. So certainly, God, you understand why I have no time for you. Certainly, God, you understand what it's like to be a child. You know that we have these screens in front of us. They even require us to use them at school all the time. I can't sit still really all that well, so you can understand, God, why I think going to your house to worship is boring. Certainly you understand. Certainly, God, you understand that there's some natural tendencies to being human. After all, you made us to be human is to be sexual, so therefore it's natural, God, isn't it, to think these things and to watch those things. And after all, all the experts say that it's okay. In fact, it may even be better for you to explore your humanness in that way. Certainly, God, you understand. 
Let's not fool ourselves. And how we may like the gods that we imagine with our hearts. Whatever God that we come up with in our own hearts and minds, that God will never be the true God. God will only be the God that he tells us he is and that he shows us that he is. So the wicked servant couldn't have been more wrong. The two faithful servants, they trusted the master so that when he entrusted them with what was his, they trusted the master would return and it would be good for them at his coming. They knew the master the right way. And if the wicked servant got it wrong and they got it right, and the wicked servant knew the master to be only evil and hard and merciless and heartless, then they trusted the master was good and gracious and kind and generous. And then, guess what kind of God God tells us he is? And what kind of God God shows us that he is? But good and gracious and kind and generous. What time is it? It's time for the servants to trust the master that they know. Think of Jesus teaching this parable and knowing that he's less than 48 hours from being nailed to the cross. And as he's teaching, think of the things that may be running through Jesus' mind as he hears what's coming out of his mouth in teaching the people. Like, what has my master father entrusted to me? Why have I come to earth? What am I here to do? Thinking to himself, what is it that I can do that brings my father the greatest joy? Or maybe when he said the statement of the master who returned, well done, good and faithful servant. He had ringing in his ears the servant's song from the prophet Isaiah and how he fulfilled it when he heard the heavenly father's voice. With him I am well pleased. So maybe, maybe as Jesus is teaching this parable, at the same time he's also reminding himself of what he has come to do. Now why do you and I need to see this? Well, how faithful have we been carrying out the master's business? How faithful have we been with what the master has entrusted and given to us? Have we ever made up or imagined these other kinds of gods? Maybe we look and we see faithfulness, but what we certainly don't see is perfection. So why do you and I need to see this? Because in Jesus, in Jesus is the only way to know who God is. To know him the right way as good and gracious and kind and gentle, loving and full of mercy. Because what did God entrust to his son? The 
but you and me. And our salvation. He sent his son and placed Jesus under the law and said to him, not only faithful, but completely perfect. And he entrusted his son with the most solemn, most solemn thing ever. He entrusted to him the cross and said, Son, go and give yourself up for them. And Jesus did it because he knows there is no way to make his father more happy and more full of joy but than to do this for us. No greater joy than for him to bring to those he loves the forgiveness and redemption he wins for them on the cross. No greater joy than to bring life to those who are going to die, to bring heaven to those who are doomed, to bring joys beyond understanding. For those who hear, weep and mourn and suffer. The joy and the happiness that Jesus has won for his Father is our joy and happiness. Because for our unfaithfulness to him, when we have not minded our master's business as we should, when we have created our own gods and our own minds, Jesus has come to carry out his master's business, to do his father's will, to forgive us our sins. So what time is it? It's time for the servants to trust the master who they know. To be good, gracious, kind, and generous. And knowing God this way, this becomes for the servants, for us, the only reason, the only reason for any sort of obedience, for any sort of faithfulness that comes from us that now along with Jesus it is our highest and our happy joy not only to know God but now to have an opportunity to live for and to serve God so what time is it now until the master returns it's time for us to faithfully live to faithfully serve him. And our master knows this too. And that is exactly why he has entrusted to us the things that he has. He's given to us things that he really shouldn't have. It could have been just fine and dandy if God just did everything himself. Probably would have worked out better too. But no, that doesn't make him happy. What makes him happy is that he now can give this work to you so that you don't only get to share in his work, but as you do, you get to share in your master's joy. He gives this to all of us. He doesn't give us all the same. To some he gives this, to others he gives that. Some he makes parents, others he makes children. Some of you work here, others work there. And the master's delight is not in the measure of the profit that the servants return to him. No, his delight is more simple than that, and that his servants, his servants gladly and happily shared in his work. I realize how difficult it is right now in these times and days to find much joy in anything. 
I know how much more difficult it is now to make sure the kids are able to do what they need to do and all the other obstacles that come with I know that it's hard for some to go to work. I know it's hard for some to stay home at work. It's hard to have church. It's hard to go to church. But we have joy. We share in our Master's joy. Yours is joy. The life He's given you. Yours is joy in the work that He has entrusted to you. Yours is joy in the pleasure He grants you. Yours is joy in the sleep that He blesses you. We trust Him as our Master who is kind and good and gracious and generous. So what time is it? It's time for us to live in our Master's joy, serving Him happily, living for Him gladly. And then when that day comes, when the, the days and the hours cease, it'll be time for us to live in the Master's joy in the eternal tomorrow. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Amen. Let's join our hearts and our voices together to confess the faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, everlasting Father, you are worthy of being praised for all your gifts and graces which you have given to us, your unworthy people. Hear us this day as we cry to you for mercy toward all people as they have need. 
You have made us your people and preserved us through the ministry of your word and, word and sacraments. Continue to pour out upon us grace upon grace that we may be kept in faith and guarded in hope. Make your church throughout the world one in confession and life and give to your church faithful pastors who will preach and teach your word with conviction. Deliver us from confusion and error by the power of your Holy Spirit and raise up those who will continue to serve in faithfulness and humility. Deliver all enemies of your church and convert their hearts to repentance and faith. Strengthen all Christians in their faith and in their vocation of service as your children that we may be obedient to your word and receive the salvation of our souls. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Deliver the nations from oppression and ungodly rulers and governments. Bless all in authority within our own nation, that righteousness may flourish and injustice end. Bless all those places where your people teach and learn, that our children may honor you, walk in your commands, and show forth in their lives the fruits of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prevent all disaster and calamity. Deliver us from war and violence and spare us from pestilence. Help us to know and rejoice in the good fruits of the earth. Bless all noble occupations and help the arts to flourish that our lives may be enriched by beauty. Help us to receive with thanksgiving the fruits of the earth you supply for our common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive with our songs of praise and sacrifice of thanksgiving the offerings we bring, that through the good use of the skills, talents, and time you have given us, you may be glorified in all we are and do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to the sick healing, to the suffering relief, to the grieving hope, and to the dying peace. Hear us especially on behalf of those who have requested our prayers and those we name before you in our hearts. Sustain us in the day of trial. Deliver us from all our enemies of body and soul and keep us steadfast in the day of trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remembering that here we have no abiding city, but heaven is our home. Give us your aid so that we may be true, that we, might, that we may by true faith and godly life prepare for the coming of our Savior. Doing the works you have called us to do and accomplishing your purpose in our daily lives. Help us to multiply your mercy by loving our neighbor in need and loving you with all our body, soul, strength, and will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing the last stands of the hymn, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Stay. 